I got the goods. Welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Hi, my name is Emma and in this series I will be taking you guys along with me as I learn how to sew at home. I will be sharing all of my tools and resources that I learned from, the projects that I take on, the mistakes that I made so that maybe you can, well, not necessarily avoid them because some things you just kind of have to experience for yourself, but maybe you can better anticipate them or not. You can maybe just get a good laugh out of it. I'll probably also be sharing some of my ponderings during those sewing sessions because trust me, I spend a lot of those hours in silence with my own thoughts, like a lot. So without further ado, let's get started. Ultimately, sewing is a skill set that I want to have in the long run, whether that's to just or make my own clothes, make some things around the house, maybe even some gifts for some friends. But the tipping point as to why I finally started would have to be because difficulty of finding clothes in my right fit, not size, fit where I live has gotten a little bit frustrating. So for context, I am Vietnamese and I live here in Vietnam. My height is 172 centimeters, which is a little bit outside of the regular range that clothes are made for here. Fortunately, my limbs are a little bit longer, so finding clothes in my right fit has not been the easiest thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. First up, this is one of the longer pair of jeans I can find here in Hanoi. They're the right size, but ideally I'd still prefer something a little bit longer. On the left, we have a pair that I got shipped in from Korea because they offered versions with longer inseams, so I jumped at that real quick. As you can see, even though the sizes are the same, I feel like the fit of the garment really makes or breaks how good it looks on your body. To be honest, Uniqlo does have a decently wide range of sizes compared to the local brands here in Vietnam, which are quite limited. As much as I do want to support my local brands, it's just not as feasible as I would like it to be. I will take matters into my own hands, learn to make my own clothes, fit my body and proportions. You know what I'm saying? So I spent a total of 5,092,000 Vietnamese dong, which in today's exchange rate is just about 206 American dollars. Let's break it down. So first, I watched this video to determine what I needed, and I'll take you through them one by one. First up, the sewing machine. I chose a brand with a dealer local to Vietnam just in case I ever needed to use my warranty or buy some spare parts. This particular model is a mechanical model. You can also buy a computerized version, but I wanted to understand how the machine works a little bit more thoroughly, so I went for this one. Besides, it's also a little bit cheaper than their computerized counterparts. I got an iron to iron out any fabric or seams. I got a pair of fabric scissors strictly for cutting fabric, a pair of craft scissors to cut any paper or patterns, and also some thread snips to cut any thread. I got a set of 40 pins that came with the sewing machine, a 50 centimeter ruler, and also a tape ruler that was just lying around in my house. I also got some Taylor's chalk. Uh, this set of thread came with the sewing machine again. And I bought five meters of elastic band just in case I wanted to make any pants or pajama bottoms. I also got 10 pieces of paper so that I could draw a pattern on. As for the buttons and zippers, we actually went to a couple stores, but it was so overwhelming. I had never seen so many buttons and zippers in my entire life, so I decided to not get any then and come back a little later when I do have specific projects to buy specific buttons and zippers for. One thing I do need to get my hands on though is a seam ripper. Right now I'm ripping with my thread snips, which is well, probably not the most efficient, but gets the job done. For fabric, first I got two meters of calico, which is kind of like a practice fabric. It is a cheaper, unbleached, less processed cotton that a lot of fashion students use to drape their designs on mannequins. I also got some canvas and lining to make a canvas bag. 
and I got a whole bunch of good cotton at this one store. The lady was super nice and generous. She showed me a stack of beginner-friendly cotton, you know, so if you mess up, then it didn't cost so much. And she even gave me some extra fabric to practice with. She also recommended me a sewing teacher, which I might just take her up on once I do get a little bit more sewing in on my own. Great vendor, 10 out of 10 would recommend. To be honest, I was a little bit nervous going out and getting these tools by myself because the team is kind of notorious for setting really high prices and then you have to go and bargain it down. So I asked my mom's friend to show me around and uh, help me buy some tools and fabric. And the experience overall was honestly pretty nice. There wasn't as much bargaining as I was expecting, but maybe that was because my mom's friend came with me and she looks like she knows what she's up to. You know, getting stuff was a success. Here is everything that I bought with prices listed in Vietnam Dong and USD. Here is the grand total of what I paid with discounts and sales and all. And here is the total if I were to pay for everything full price. I wanted to present both numbers so that you guys have a more realistic idea of how much it could cost. My mom's friend showed me how to thread the machine and wind the bobbin. And although I technically could go online and watch a tutorial, just having someone show the first step to me really helped to take a bit of the friction out and kickstart the learning process. I'm not gonna lie, the fabric grain part, it took me a while to understand what it means. But I did some research and here's what I came up with. Understanding fabric grain is important because the way that you cut your fabric will determine whether or not your garment will hold its shape or stretch. Let's imagine a person weaving some fabric on a loom, or in this case, this lovely chicken. The width of the loom doesn't change, and this is the width of your fabric. Now you start out with some strands running up and down, and this technically could go for as long as you want. The way these strands are positioned means that they don't stretch much even if you pull them up and down along the screen. This is called the grain of the fabric, or the straight grain. Then you take another strand and weave it horizontally, left and right through the vertical strands. The weaving pattern allows the fabric to stretch sideways. This is called the cross grain. If you were to make a pair of pants, you'd want it to stretch sideways, right? Not lengthways. But if you really want to have a stretchy garment, you can also cut your fabric along the diagonal, called the bias. This direction is the most stretchy of them all. You can also think about it this way. If you went to a shop, picked out a roll of fabric, and asked the vendor to please sell you a meter of fabric, they're gonna rip your fabric like this, along the zigzag lines, which reveals the raw edges going sideways. This is parallel with the cross grain. The other two edges that are smooth are called the selvages, which indicate the grain. So when I cut my fabric, I think about which direction I want my fabric to stretch, which direction I want the fabric to hold shape, then cut accordingly. Usually it's easier to tell with patterned fabric because you just rotate the fabric in the direction until the pattern makes visual sense. For my first project, I wanted something with few pieces of fabric, something with rectangular pieces so that they're easy to cut out, and something where I didn't have to worry about fit. And I present to you the ultimate beginner project, drum rolls please, the tote bag. First, I tested out the thread tension and length on some scrap fabric, and then I got down to the real thing. Even holding down the fabric straight was a little bit challenging for me, but in a couple hours, voila, we have our first tote. As you can see, the X reinforcements are a little janky. My French seams weren't seaming. You can totally see the inside fabric peeking through. And the straps feel a little short, so I will be making these adjustments for next time. I also ended up showing my mom and she was super supportive actually. Yeah. <laughs> Đây là con may vải vải nháp đấy. Dùng được luôn rồi. Ừ. Chưa con may một ít nhỉ? Hồi xưa đạp một tí nhưng mà con còn con còn chưa may được một cái sản phẩm gì cơ. Hồi xưa. Vải thô. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Quite quickly, I became ecstatic over the idea that I could now activate Toad Master mode. Make totes for all my friends, everyone that I knew. So I quickly ordered more fabric and I planned on making four totes immediately the following night, but I did end up running a slight fever that evening, so I stopped right after making the first tote. I think I was a little bit out of it, so I missed a step. And you can kind of see the raw edges peeking through here, but you know what? It's still cute. I'm still obsessed. Anyways, that's all for this video. I'm definitely getting a lot out of the learning process. One of which is gaining a whole lot of respect for all the seamstresses, the tailors, the designers out there who work in this industry because I'm only getting my toes dipped in right now. And I can only imagine the level of patience, creativity, and attention to detail that this craft requires. So mad props to them. And if you, dear viewer, are on the fence about whether or not you should start sewing, maybe this is a sign for you to give it a shot. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!